Um, so hello, my name is Min Sul Kim from Team Korea, and we will, um, today I will present number 13, more drug counter. So there are three tasks to this problem. Number one, more definition. When a pattern of cozy space, non-intersecting lines with transparent gas PC is overlaid on top of labeled in fabric. Characteristic of more fringes may be observed. Here, more fringes means newly generated pattern with magnifying pitch. Number two, design an overlay. We're going to change orientation angle and spacing pitch in order to create an overlay, and this allows us to measure the thread count of the fabric. Here, 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 the thread count means wart and web number. Task three, application of fabrics. You have to determine the accuracy of four simple fabrics such as linen, which doesn't create a new pattern. While investigated, the method is also reliable for more complex fabrics such as linen and oxford cloth, which creates the more pattern itself. Now for the observation. So more pattern generate could be generated by two, two different types. One, by pitch difference, and also through mismatch and angling. So here, bright, dark, bright, dark, and bright pattern occurs, and we call this more pattern, and it will be TM. So as you can see, more pattern could be um, generated if the pitch is different, and here we can see that more magnification is greatest when the minimal pitch difference. On the other side, we can also create by rotating it the angle, and as you can see, more magnification is greatest when the minimal angle difference but here, oh, it does not create the more pattern when it is zero angle difference. And not only that, the most important part is that I select the most prominent more with the longest wavelength. So first to the intuitive model, we could um, generate, we could model this through initial equation model, putting this in a coordinate and determining y equals mtv, where um, each of the um, more pattern could be um, numbered as follows. And also for the overlay pattern, we could um, numerically um, have the initial equation as follows, with each of the numbers as m, with, with each of the numbers m. And here, m minus n will be the pitch difference. So here, such as 1, 1, we could um, label each of the more pattern as follows, p0, p1, p2, and p2. And through this initial equation, we could um, actually, actually calculate the equation of the center line of p5 more band, as follows. And here the angle alpha means the, the angle difference. So more pattern composition. So more pattern can be created through base layer and over layer. And applying this with the initial equation model to create the, uh, to solve for zeta and also the uh, more pattern on um, TM, we could solve as follows. So like that, um, when TO and TB um, different ratio is equal to one, and cosine alpha get closer to one, more would be the greatest. And, and with the TM zeta information, we could inversely find TEN zeta, so which this will help us to identify what was the um, base uh, base T and zeta. Well, however, for this model, there are limitations. First, only geometrical layout of central lines could be could be modeled. So there is, there is a discrepancy with the reality. And also, it's hard to discriminate black and white zones with more because we normally see gray zones when we are farther away. So it is inaccurate. And also, we have to equate all the patterns so if the baseline is hard, then it will be, it will be uh, limited application. And also, it cannot uh, explain the reason for dominant more, which I previously explained, that our eyes uh, takes the only the wavelength with the longest. And for a precise model, we're going to draw a vector by diagram for periodic structure model. So K1 and K2 each um, defines the wavelength it each defines the inverse of the wavelength. And here we can point that each of the uh, points could be um, uh, explained by the linear combination of K1 and K2. Here comes the important part where we are going to define a visible D circle. And here D is a diameter of pupil, U is spatial frequency of the patterns, and lambda is wavelength of the line. And with this, if we have a first approximation, we will get the um, we will get that um, wavelength times 0.8 will be the ones that we are that is visible. So it will be invisible beyond the threshold. Uh, threshold, however, that is inside will be the ones that we're going to detect. And also, um, we're going to define.
design the purely structure of woven fabric as elementary base units um, with the pattern of repetition where we're going to define the cost um, as a translation. And with this, we're going to say that the warp charge will represent the arbitrary by vertical lines while the web direction corresponds to the horizontal lines. And also, this is important because for the elementary base unit, it will give us the information about the dimensions of the rectangular diagram while the pattern of repetition itself will get that is defined the 2D cone function will help us to describe the tilt, a tilt, which is the direction, and also how the pattern will be, is shaped. So with this, uh, we're going to analyze the frequency domain. Um, first, frequency domain. And here, as you can see from the image domain, we have alpha m and beta m to define the base. And with this, we could actually calculate the tilted fringes of fre frequency of f1t, work thread PFA, and also the um, web thread. Now for a the theoretical application, we're going to use this method for first plane waves, where as you can see, um, this would be the one base unit, and each of them could be defined by alpha m and beta m, and q1, q1, and n2 will be the one that will define the pattern, the pattern itself. And this could be applica applicated for basket weave and tool weave as well. So moving on to the experiment, we're going to define these unknown values. So we don't know the thread count, but from now on, we're going to try to identify each of them. So first, um, for the simple fabric canvas, um, we have this object, and then <coughs> there are gray scaled as, uh, as, as the right. And if we put this into FFT, then we can calculate, we can show that there are, um, we, can show, we can get the diagram of the amplitude and the spectrum. And for this, with the method that I have shown you before, we could actually calculate the um, FT and FE and FA. And from this, we could um, analyze the uh, original um, thread count. So for this, we can calculate that the thread count is about 15 per millimeter squared. And um, work and wet will be one, by one to be one. And for the complex fabrics such as twill, it is also applicable as follows. Thread count will be 20 per millimeter, and um, web work and web will be 2 by 3 because the P is 2 and Q is 3. And also for different kind of fabrics, um, this could be explained. And as a result, <coughs> for the FFT, these um, values are obtained. Well, this is not the main point. These are just to identify the um, what are the answers for the FFT, and later we're going to define um, precisely with the overlays. So now let's move on for at first for the manual counting. Um, for, for this, I had a 1 inch by 1 inch um, frame in order to count the threads within the box with the, um, with, with the handmade um, needle counter. And by manually counting, we could have these uh, results. And this shows that there are average of 0.94 error, um, 94 error. And um, this has a limit that is very labor intensive. Here, the average of the error was calculated by comparing with the FFD results, which is our answer to this problem. And now the most important part. First, we have the linear overlay counting. As you can see, we had a magnifying lamp, and we placed, um, if we made it uh, horizontally, and then, as you can see, there are different types of uh, lines and we put it a um, angle, we change the angle so that there are interval distance from 0.5 millimeter to 2 millimeter and as well as the angle difference. And with this, the linear overlay counting result, there were average of 1.523% of error. However, this is just for the linen and canvas. However, when we included the twill, there were 9.52% of error. So why is this? Well, we believe that this is this method is highly inaccurate for complex fabric, and we will identify it. Uh, we will change, modify our counting overlay in order to uh, make sure that the is also calculated. So, experiment <coughs> for the radial overlay counting. We first had a radial overlay, and then we <coughs> marked the um, cross set cross um, where the um, more pattern occurs. And then we place that overlay on top of the grid so that we can measure um, the coordinate. And with the coordinate, we're gonna, um, we, we were able to reversely calculate the Tn and zeta, which is the orientation and also the frequency difference between each of the four and web directions. So these are just an example for radial overlay counting, creating the more patterns. And with this 
radial overlay counted result, we were able to calculate each of them, each of them, and got the average of 0.56% error. So this could have shown that this method is also effective for complex numbers. So until now, we have had we talked about um, three different tasks. Task part one talked about the Mohr definition and its mechanism. So I previously stated that Mohr is created when there are two different when when the pitch is different or the angle is different. So these were the two um, mechanisms of creating Mohr pattern. And task part two was about the designing an overlay. So at first I showed you manual FFT results, and then I showed you calculating by manual counting, and then I showed you the linear overlay, which had a limitation because for linear linear overlay, it was only able to calculate for simple fabrics, but not for complex fabrics. And this point is very important because for the complex fabrics, the fabric itself makes a more pattern. So basically, if we have an overlay on top of a more pattern, then the more then the more pattern that's already generated in the complex fabric and the overlay would be the only ones that are interacting. So from that, we will only able to calculate um, the pattern that is generated from the um, fabric. So this has the limitation. However, for radial overlay, we were able to prevent that um, limitation, so it was very effective. And task part three was about the application of fabric. So here, as I told you before, um, unlike the linear overlay, we had a contribution of making a new overlay type, which is gradient overlay. And this was very effective because we don't have to um, change the angle, and we could just put it on top of the um, fabric. So these three tasks was fulfilled. Thank you for listening. Okay, so first of all, uh, why do our eyes see the dark fringes? The glass? Yeah, so it is basically a interference pattern. So we could see that. So for this, we could define this. Can you as please turn it. Oh, sorry. Size. Yes, of course. So we could define the um, dark um, overlay or the uh, red as zero and the bright part as one. 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. And then when we have an overlay, uh, a different pitch, for example, you could see that this could be also 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0. So for the parts where there is light pattern, light, and also the black point, it will multiply and get 0. So for that point, we would, see, we would say that um, when there is a dark pattern on top of um, whether on top of the dark pattern or dark pattern on top of a light pattern, it will always give us zero. Okay. So that shows that. It's so if you want me later, yes, yes. approach of time, which is the maximum of threads that your counter can count. Sorry. Which is the maximum of threads that your counter is able to count? Um, actually, you can count from range to um, like five to about fifty because for the fifty and sixty point. Um, it is very hard to calculate, um, even through any overlays, because okay. interference light like, doesn't penetrate much. Okay. So, which is the geometrical profile of the moiety that your counter produces? Sorry. Which is the geometrical pattern that your counter produces? You have the linear and the radial. Ah, yes, yes. Is, so yes. there is a difference between mm -hmm. the geometric. So for the, I think linear is pretty easy, so uh -huh. we'll have this discussion later. And for the overlay, when we have these kind of radial patterns and there are threads that are, that are like this, or either grid, okay. then we have okay. a pattern like Thank this. You very much. Thank you. Thank you. So my name is Tere Martinez. Uh, we will oppose the problem number 13 or the inference challenge. So first, this is the problem. <coughs> When a pattern of closely spaced non-intersecting lines is overlaid on a piece of woven fabric, characteristic moiety fringes may be observed. Design an overlay that allows you to measure the thread count of the fabric, determine the accuracy for simple fabrics, and investigate if the material is reliable for more complex fabrics. So the first part, the first task is to understand what what is the moiety effect and why is it produced. The second task would be to create a moiré pattern-based thread counter. And then we will have to determine its accuracy and maybe include some variables. And the task number three will be on the understanding of the geometrical composition of the moiré pattern and 
it's important because maybe we can use this for further investigation. So this is the direct strengths and improvement area that I found in your report. First, in the qualitative analysis, it, it, there was a well understanding of the mechanism of the white pattern uh, for the reporter. And then the experiment, they they considered the two ways to reduce the MRI effect, which is rotating and moving the, the fringes. And the variables, they used the fabric and the radial and linear counters. Error uh, Average was calculated, which is, is important. And the quantitative analysis, they, they <coughs> explained very well the model. And the imprecisions, which I also think that are very important here because it, uh, we will have to, well, this counter is made to, uh, to work with different types of fabric and is more to be considered. And the uh, interesting <coughs> questions of the experiment, they said they didn't did work for complex fabrics, but it was more accurate for simple fabrics. The improvement areas uh, are the qualitative, in the qualitative analysis. They miss the explanation of why we see the black fringes, and that's what I asked later, because it is made, well, it could be said as an optical illusion, but that fundament behind this optical illusion was missing. And the experiments do not explain how the counters were designed, the, which materials, or, or if they try different ways, I think that that is missing and the different geometrical part. And for further analysis, I will ask you to ask if, how can you measure more threads that your counter allows you because they mentioned that it was only for percent threads. So yeah, I think that it, it could be more, a more complex counter for more complex threads. So now I will, uh, I will invite you to that debate, please. So first of all, uh, I would like to start in the order of my test. Yes. So okay, you explain what is the the more counter, the, the more effect, mm -hmm. and uh, you were talking about the how the uh, 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 optical illusions <laughs> work. Yes. Right. So can you finish up explaining in this part? Yes, I will um, explain it through my own. So, um, so as you can see, we can define each of the gradient intensity profile. So the part where there is a, um, where that, that, that's the line is the one that I'm true here. So that would be the overlay or the flex. Okay. So for that, it would, it, will, it will be dark. Well, there is no um, line passing through. Only the light will pass through, so it will be dark, right? So we can um, identify this as a cos cosine um, function as, as follows. So we can um, actually represent each of the grid for transparency function as above. So with this, uh, if we have like two different uh, light overlays, like essentially the black one and blue one, uh -huh. then the above one would be, for example, the um, blue one, and the bottom one would be, for example, the black one. So you can see that where the line goes through, we will define um, all of them as zero, while the, the, where the line does not go through, we will define it once. So, one. so that's why um, when we multiply this, then it will um, tell us that the points where there is line, um, whether that is zero times one or zero times zero, it will always give zero. So that is why we can um, actually show that the multiplication of transparency function um, tell us the overlay. So okay. for this, um, we could ha actually have a it's multiplication of okay. this. Okay. 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 And about this, for example, you have this is the your your first grill edge, and the second grill edge will go for something like this. And the, so you can say so you can say that the more lines that we can see are are connecting the points where where the light is blocked, right? Yes, yes, that's true. So where could it be? Where in this drawing, for example, where the light is, I see the more red. Yes, there. Um, so as you can see from here, um, we have like this as a representing in Can you draw it here? Yes. 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 So um, this is just like what we see physically, but uh -huh. if we put this into a, um, if we put this into um, not just like, uh, into a spatial frequency domain, 
then we could define each of them as K1 or this guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So these are combinations of this. Okay, so this concept is, is complete. So now uh, I will talk about your thread counter. Yes. How did you build it? Mm -hmm. yes. Which materials did you use? Let's start with that. Okay. The thread counter now. So as you can see, you oh, really? it's not like overly sorry. Oh, you can explain me. Yes. Don't worry. So here, sorry. yes. <laughs> so here, um, we actually have a oh sorry, OH is one, right? Yes, yes. The on top, so there is a OH film, mm -hmm. and then we actually um um we actually um like draw all the lines through our. Okay, I have. I mean, no, like, like not with the um, hand, but then like through the computer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But the, the space between each line is is always the same. Um, okay, so as you can see, I varied the lines. So these, oh, okay. yes. Okay. So as you can see, and do you yes. think that, uh, for example, if you had suppose that this is the black line? Yes. For example, if they are. Okay, so for example, we will say this is black, mm -hmm. black transparent, black transparent, black. Yes. If, if supposing that here it is, it is the same space okay. and in this, mm -hmm. just see the fact that it is different the the, the transparent gaps against the mm -hmm. the dark mm -hmm. the dark bands. Does it have any effect on the accuracy of your thread counter? So I think this is a very good point that Apollon pointed out because this thread, um, uh, so this like overlay thickness is very important because if it's thick enough, then we will see different pattern mm -hmm. because um, for that it has to be. What do you refer with different? For example, yes, if yes. I try this mm -hmm. one and uh, you know, another one, which is like I like this, like this one that it is like this. So this length is quite smaller than this length mm -hmm. and both make places yes, on the same fabric. Why okay. will I see? So first let's talk about the fabric. So fabric okay. will have a very um the thickness will be very small. Do you agree? Yeah. yeah. So the thickness will be very small for the And do you need a, a specific yes. uh, if they must be parallel or the lines could be or the threads could be woven in any yes. direction. So let's first talk about the feature just, yeah. just, just oh, like sorry. So let's first talk, talk about the curl because it's more easier. Uh -huh. okay. So these would be the threads. Mm -hmm. And if we have the overlay that, as you said, there are like um, like a lot of thickness, mm -hmm. then we will have it covered entirely. And for some point, it would actually have a part where we entirely... No, but the key that yeah. I'm referring to is when you're rotating, uh, when rotating, when rotating, because yeah. the more hair in this case will be diagonal. So, um, well, I, I actually believe the angle difference is well, angle difference will depend. However, more than that, no, but the difference is, between this and between this, yes. perhaps I think that it would be uh, like in this, if you the, the more hair fringes, the imaginary lines yes. will be uh, will be more. Uh, will be more visible than in this case because there is more area that is blocking the light. Oh, um, I actually think reversely because I think it is not much visible because uh, as I said before, the threads are like very um, tightly spaced uh -huh. and we have overlay that are covering the entire point, then we would not have the more pattern that we expected. So I believe no, that, that I don't think that, angle that you're not getting what I'm trying sorry, to say. Sorry, can you explain more? For example, yeah, let's take it, what, can you show me a photo of the, your fabric, which where it is? Yes. Yeah. For example, this first one. Yes. So over that, yeah. I will place a thread counter. I don't know if you try this. I just yeah, a thread yeah. counter, which has the same length, the the dark fringes and the transparent fringes. Yes. It rotated to see the white pattern and and the, um, and take the thread count. And then I will use a different uh, thread counter, which are more separated. Of, well, the, that the length of the dark fringes are is smaller than the length of the transparent fringes. I think that this is it, and I think it would change 
of course, yeah, yeah, because the uh, the light passing through yeah. the through the counter and the fabric will be different amount. Yes. So I want to know which one you think would be more accurate to make a, a thread counter. Um, for me, I actually printed out several different types of overlays. So at first, I actually had the um, thickness very thick, and then I use a um, and then I change it to a very um, little thickness because so which one do you think, think it is the most effective? Like small, 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 yes. small one. Yes. Small one. Yes. Small one. Because it has to be I similar to, to be similar to the fabric. <coughs> the fabric thickness. Okay. So, it's, but what do you refer to small one? Small, the same. The same yes. length of the transparent and and the dark fringes or different length. Which one? Okay, no, let's okay, just sorry, pass to yeah, another yeah, point. Don't, don't worry. And okay, so uh, you say that your counter works for any kind of fabric. Yeah, until fifty. But for example, uh, if we have like I don't know the sports cloth or. Uh, or a fabric with that has holes. Yes, yes. What do you think happens in this case if your thread counter uh, works, doesn't work, what do you think it affects? Yes, it depends on the shape of the fabric. So it's like if the um so for example if it's um like um so as you can see, if it's like shaped like a grid and there if you're referring that as a hole, yeah, then it will it will work. But <laughs> if you're talking about the circular like holes, like there's like the fabric and the circular holes that have different power. But if you're referring to this one, then it's the same. So it will work in this case, but not in this one. For this case, we have to create another overlay. But then most of our yes, I think that we have, you know, but the problem statement says um, we have to have a woven fabric. So usually that is created by woven. Well, this is not. So I think the problem statement is fulfilled. Okay, it's okay. And oh, yeah, I I forgot. So. Uh, do you have, you didn't uh, make any uh, any speculation of how can you count uh, a, a higher thread count than 15? 15? Uh, wh which one was you the maximum thread that you uh, Above 50? 50. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, above 50, do you yes. have any uh, um, any idea of how to calculate? I don't know. Uh, uh, yes, yes. So as I said, the thickness of the overlay should be very small in order to, to calculate 60 because or else it will all like so the 16 means it is very dense, right? Uh -huh. So when it's really dense and yes. you have overlay that is not dense enough, then it will um, actually cover not just one but a lot of the parts. So that means that it's like hard to calculate the thread. Okay, so, so we're in yes. a right. So I will also want to tell you that um, it fits you here. Yes, that no, we're not on the time. <laughs> it will be a larger point. Because I think that you can see it, this in as multiple or multiple. Okay, okay, so first of all, I think that the explanation of what uh, Maria was uh, was completed during this discussion. And then I think that there must be um, and more variables in the in the thread counter that they made because they didn't consider that changing this it will change the mortisin and it will it maybe alter the result that you have. It may give you another answer that is not the correct answer. And I also think that there was missing hey, another way. I don't know if it could be with adapting the mathematical model or something, or by calculating the, uh, I don't know, the, the fringe that we see, uh, so we can get uh, a higher thread count, besides the, besides the number that they can get. And I, I, I didn't get well, I didn't understand well how did they created the, their thread count, but that's it. And the reporter for discussion, and I'd like to ask the reporter first. Uh, you mentioned that the eye chooses the highest frequency, but then have you tried a more uh, lowest frequency? Uh, the lowest frequency, sorry. Have you tried a more um, objective way of looking at the pattern? For example, scanning the pattern without using your eyes. Yes. Like, have you tried like scanning the image? 
Oh, yes, yes. Not only just our eyes, the camera itself also has similar effect because for camera, it has a lens um, that is like nonlinear. So for that, we can actually see that the only the longest wavelength will be um, selected. Okay, thank you. Um, how, um, how about you? Do you think that you should, uh, the reporter should use her eyes to determine the Mori pattern, or should she use like a scanner and then using FNT on the scanner? Okay, so it, it will be maybe more accurate with the scanner, but it may also provoke another more, more uh, over the, the thread counter that they are using. So I think that it first it should be made by eyes, okay. and then we can just yeah, scan. Um, if the the two if the fabric you use does not have a pattern between like light dark and light dark, um, <coughs> and, and it's all the same color, can you still observe the more pattern if you put like lines on it? Well, I was referring to light one as not just like a fabric, but it's as a place that there is no fabric. So mm -hmm. light meaning all the light is penetrating, and dark meaning it is blocked by the threads. So okay. it is not just a pattern. But Can I ask about what light. your definition of accuracy is? How you use yes, yes, for accuracy, we measured. Um, so at first, we had an FFT result to actually have the answer, and then we compared it with our overlay. So we had um, the over, overlay. Um, so, overlay over the FFT results times um, times what was it? Uh, oh, yeah, about 100, 100. So that um, we have the ratio between the actors between the FFT result and the ones that we're creating overlay. Um, how do you think the angle of the overlay will affect the result? I think that it, this does affect because you can see a different moire and. Oh, I think this point wasn't clarified. The the right uh, thread count you only will know it when the more fringe that you see is parallel, is is horizontal. So I think that you you it just sometimes move the the counter 360 degrees and you will never find a horizontal line because that's not the exact thread count. Oh um, yeah. Um, the more you observe, is it on the edge of your strip or is it like the whole strip? Like when you put the lines on the moiré, you see, um, is it the pattern, is it formed due to the edge of that strip of cloth, or is it the entire strip? Oh, it's the entire strip. Okay, what do you think? Can you repeat your question? I think again. Yeah. My lines is like, the strip of the linen is like this, mm -hmm. and then is the moiré due to the edge of the strip or the entire strip? Very sure. The entire oh. oh. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry, but I'm doing a mirror from team time one, and today I'll be reviewing number 13 more for counter. So here's the problem statement. The problem statement asks us to investigate how the inter the pattern the pattern of the closely spaced non-intersecting lines happens is overlaid on a piece of woven fabric, and we're to observe the more fringes. And then we to after that we have to design an overlay that allows us to measure the thread count of the fabric. And then we to determine the accuracy for the simple fabric, and then investigate if the method is um, reliable for more complex fabrics, like denim or Oxford cloth. So this is the reported performance. They she talked about how the phenomenon is due to the light, dark, the light and dark patterns on the moiré on the fabric, and then she showed the moiré clear moiré images, and she had a clear breakdown of the problem statement into steps, and she followed those steps to solve the problem. But I believe that she shouldn't only use her eyes to analyze the pattern because the eyes are objective and she and she clarified the limitations of her model. However, she didn't explain why her first design is accurate, um, inaccurate and why because she modified her um, her theory, her second experiment, uh, second design works. And she a pro is that she analyzed the FFT result so we can clearly see what the result of how the different mores patterns differ from each other. And then she had a high accuracy of it. So this is for the opponent. She focused on the formation of the fringes, and then later she asked about the experiment setup, like how she measured the uh, moiré and what procedure she used. And they discussed the thickness of the lines. And pros is that she pointed out like the complexity of the fabric and discussed her points based on the topic she organized it by. And she measured the thickness of the lines, which I believe is a very important parameter. And there will be a limit in which once the thickness exceeds a certain amount, we won't see the more patterns anymore. However, they didn't. Um, the opponent missed the explanations where the reporter talked about her procedure of measuring during her presentation 
and she didn't use her time efficiently because she had an extra minute left in her presentation, and she didn't really input her own opinions during the discussion and just ask the reporter to show what she had. And in the clarification questions, they asked about what the fundamental reason for the Mori pattern is, and the reporter answered that it's because of interference and talked about binary multiplication. And I believe, I agree with the reporter, but I believe that there's no clear procedure on deriving the pattern to the red density. Next, they talked about thickness of lines. <coughs> and the opponent asked about the difference and the effect of accuracy, and the reporter said that it is important and qualitatively explained that it would decrease the gap, uh, decrease the gap between the lines. And I agree, but the, if the thickness of the street strip increases to nearly no gaps between it, the trend of the Mori patterns will only change its direction due to its relative gap, like horizontally and vertically, because the gap horizontally might slowly become less than a gap vertically, so the direction of the Mori pattern will flip. Next, they talked about the limit of the fabric uh, thread density. And the opponent asked about the limits on the density, and the reporter said it depends on the line intervals. And I believe that they should consider, the, uh, consider it to better des design. And here is uh, the two points missed that I believe is important that they should have um, discussed. For example, they could have um, used a scanner to scan the image and then use another program to run an FFT on it, and then the FFT will give two frequencies, and the two frequencies will be the, uh, the frequency of the horizontal and the vertical lines. And then they also should just um, have a clearer definition of like the here, uh, thickness of the Mori pattern itself, because I believe that the thickness of the Mori pattern itself is what uh, will also determine the different the accuracy that a reporter gets from the results. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so hello again. Um, I will briefly overview what I have did, did um, <coughs> So first I talked about more, we discussed about the more patterns, so I gave you as, um, as the review told us, about using the binary multiplication method to have the more definition. And here I define the more pattern to be the ones that have the uh, magnified amplitude uh, or the um, a, a magnified wavelength so that we can visibly see. And here, um, it is important uh, important to say that um, the more pattern it could be, is uh, the binary multiplication method is applied for nonlinear, um, non-linear, so um, since our app, so whether that is our eye or whether that is a camera, it is all in a spherical shape. So for that, we could um, say that a uh, more pattern is, also, is generated for both of them. So that is not that important. And when talking about the visibility circle, you can see that the D is a diameter of pupil. So we can just put in the <coughs> diameter of the camera lens to solve for the visibility circle and which one is um, would be inside the threshold. So that could is um, enough for explanation, I think. And also for the second part, um, it is very important to point out about the thickness. Um, the reason why I said the linear overlay did not have an answer um, for the complex fabric, but the radial overlay did, was because for the radial overlay, Because I use a radial overlay that is very small compared to the um, fabric itself, there is a point about this point where the, the difference between the thickness is very small and also the um, interval is similar. So at that point, the more pattern will be um, will be multiplied um, as much. So okay. this is my overview. Thank you. Questions? Can someone just explain to me, like, if you have this pattern, mm -hmm. how do you get the set down? Yeah, so as I said before, um, this, so for that point, um, there is a more pattern that occurs. For, so we could actually draw a plus um, red line uh, uh, along this line. And the, the point of the, in the middle would be the one that we'll um, define as one of the coordinates. And with that coordinate number, we could actually have the um, profile of the radial, the radial overlay. So for example, if that um, distance difference is 0 0.5 and we had the um, 0 0.5 and we had that point with the magnified more pattern, then um, since that point is 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 and it had magnified pattern, we could infer that that point is where there is a minimal frequency difference. So from there, we could actually say that the base, um, base pattern or the um, 
40 fabric itself has similar to the 0.5 um, distance difference. Any questions? Constant pitch, the big over there. Yeah. Uh, constant pitch? Yeah. Well, for the um, pattern, uh, for 40 fabric, yeah. sometimes it is um, made by, um, I mean, uh, it is not always regular because sometimes there would be a bit slightly more closer while there are like parts where there is like large. So that's why while we're manually counting, we have um, different kind of specimens and then we average it so that we could actually have okay. more accurate results. Thank you. Five, 
Yeah, so I gave you one for the questions asked. I think you, uh, you asked few but very relevant questions, I think three of them, but all of them start to make the presentation clearer to me, so this was one point. Um, for your speech, I gave you 2.5 points because, um, yeah, I think uh, you, you showed a good understanding of the, of the presentation and you addressed, uh, in my opinion, all the relevant topics. Um, there were a few own of, your, of your own opinions in your presentation, um, but in, uh, in my eye, the prioritization was, prioritization was nice because you focused, or you started with um, how the effect actually uh, is, is created or how we perceive it, which I think was a bit unclear in the, in the presentation, so I appreciated that. And um, yeah, the time management of the presentation, I uh, didn't find that bad because the time you don't use in your speech gets added to the discussion anyways. Um, so then in the discussion, I gave you 2.5. Um, mainly, uh, so you got the best in uh, the relevant scientific topics because I think you brought up two new things which weren't added or mentioned in the presentation which are very important, namely the width of the line. And also in the very end, um, you discussed about achieving higher resolution, which I think is, is very crucial in this task because um, it has one of the limits of, of the, what's done. And you mentioned it in the very end, which I think was a bit sad because that could be like, leading up to this point could be like the, the yeah, guiding, guiding your discussion. Um, I also had the feeling that you presented many of your own opinions, so contrary to what you said. So that was, uh, was good. Um, and I, I also think that you, you used your time. You didn't stick to one point too long. You went through many different, and I also felt you had quite an idea where you were going. So, yeah. For the evening, we have Mars from 7 to 9. So we run from 7 to 4 to 7 to 7. Uh, I gave you uh, one for a question asked, and it's, it's typical by you, uh, you ask uh, the questions. Uh, 1.5 for uh, review report, uh, 2 points uh, for review of uh, opposition, um, and this one, uh, one point uh, for discussion analysis, and uh, Added, uh, added something uh, open to for uh, Ms. Paul. You gave me an idea because, first of all, I tried to be consistent in order in the physics, first physics part of the eight, so I thought it was better. But you have a lot of points with this. So I'll give you one point five for the questions asked. I think they were quite well right, quite interesting. I give you two points for the review of the report, it was quite good. Other points <coughs> emphasize with the points you made and you made a reasonable prioritization. I give you three points for the review of the position because I, I think it was quite correct, accurate, and fully adequate. I, I, I really wasn't any point which I didn't agree. And I give you one point five points for the discussion analysis because you could well, stay, you could still have, sorry. You were able to pay attention to every point and which were made and what exactly was the opinion of even of the opponent of the reporter and you were able to stress or even say us what is your opinion or your own opinion so they are appreciated so and it's summed up.